Indicators of progress and growth beyond GDP are critical to providing insights about the health of our societies. There are a variety of initiatives to measure societal well-being around the world. Uh, people might be familiar with Bhutan's Gross National uh, Happiness Index. Um, it's, it's been in use since 1971. Uh, more recently, uh, New Zealand has actually announced a well-being budget for 2019 that will seek to improve uh, economic uh, performance alongside living standards for New Zealanders. National measures of well-being, like the Canadian Index of Well-Being, shown here, uh, they're great for tracking countrywide well-being progress. However, uh, we know that responsibility for well-being is often delegated to municipalities and community organizations. That's where the Waterloo Region Community Wellbeing Survey is vital. The survey asks, asks questions under these eight domains here uh, to obtain community insights about well-being in the region. Our analysis shows that healthy populations, community vitality, and leisure and culture are the primary determinants of well-being in the region. This is the variable important graph. For the support vector machine, we trained using the questionnaire data. Variables at the top are most helpful in categorizing well-being, most notably exercise and nutrition. But we also have work dissatisfaction and healthcare accessibility among the top variables, making them the strongest predictors for well-being in the region of Waterloo. We developed our own well-being score on the weights of the variable importance slides from before. This is important because it pegs well-being to a single metric and it's useful to have a single snapshot of the data. This is a distribution of the overall well-being scores. Our Bayesian network also confirms a support vector machine using a machine-learned network structure. The network suggests that healthy food and quality exercise directly relate to well-being, and that this relationship is not mediated through other factors. As well, well-being is impacted by and impacts other factors in the network, including health services, community sentiment, and work-life balance. As well, the network also indicates that when an individual has regular nutritious meals and healthy exercise, they are 74% more likely to have above average well-being. We also performed an ordinal regression to see how incremental changes in variables affected overall well-being. And we found that small changes in leisure time, exercise and nutrition, and the amount of community opportunities yielded the highest gains in overall well-being. So for leisure time, we have this green line where we have diminishing returns on well-being, but really, really high returns for those who reported low amounts of leisure time. Exercise and nutrition, the red line, we see compounding returns, which is really interesting. It means that we continue to see higher and higher gains in well-being as you get more and more exercise. Community opportunities had relatively stable gains on well-being, but also really high. So since these three areas, the lowest, uh, only take a small amount of change to yield a high gain in well-being, these are the three focus areas we recommend to the region to focus their policies and programs regarding well-being. Um, Colloquially, this is where they'll get the most bang for their buck. Along with our data-based recommendations, we also recommend that the region creates an online interactive tool where residents can explore and play around with variables and see how that impacts overall well-being. This will help create a community dialogue and help explain to individuals what measures they could implement in their own lives to improve their own well-being. And lastly here, um, just a call for action. We have a lot of uh, agencies and groups in, in here with um, money. Uh, so uh, we think someone uh, should facilitate a competition between communities across Canada and run a race to the top for well-being challenge. The challenge would encourage communities to improve their overall well-being by looking at policy-specific uh, programs, uh, programs that would uh, in improve uh, well-being. A similar example of this, there's been lots of examples of sort of grand challenges to solve uh, really big policy problems in Canada. Uh, this challenge would also foster the development of a well-being community of practice and enable local governments uh, and organizations to share best practices in evidence-based evidence policy and programming that leads to an improvement in, in well-being locally and nationally. Thank you. Well done.